Hello and welcome to another episode from the Water's Edge. Now today we've got a little bit of a, a special one. We've left our home counties of Norfolk and we're actually down in Essex. We're at Bradwell Marina and we've got a trip booked with a local charter skipper, Phil White. We're going to be fishing today aboard his boat, the Chinook, and hopefully we're going to put a few fish on camera for you. It's a bit of a... Uh, mixture out here I think in these waters so I'm not 100% sure what we're going to be targeting but hopefully some smooth hound and some form backs I think Phil's on the boat now and I think he's put the kettle on for us so without delay we'll get down there have a word with Phil have a chat find out a little bit more about his setup here and what we can expect to catch so we'll get down there now we'll catch up we're on board and we'll see what happens on board today. That's right, it's well, a uh, glorious day for it. Anyway, sun is shining, sea's flat calm, so it's just a case of hopefully a few fish or two. That's it. So whereabouts actually are we today? We are okay, well this is where we are, all around this fishing around this area today, which is all the mapping sands. Yeah, so right this, this is part water. of the, the yes. Thames all estuary. Part of the Thames estuary. The Thames estuary is a huge area. This is where we've come from today, up in the back of this area. Okay, so we've come all the way out here and all the way up this way here. But we fish all around this, this area, it's a huge area. Um, a lot of time in the winter time we fish all around here, winter and spring. In the summer we push off further out in this area and up here for the smooth It's obviously got a vast amount of water there. I guess it's one of the good things, there's a lot of, a lot of shelt around this area, so I guess most yeah. of the time you can get out when some of the boats are struggling exactly. you've always got you've got the shelter of the land and you can normally tuck in somewhere yeah we've got a lot of time in the all especially right for the autumn winter and the spring all of our fishing is all around this area there and it's lots of sheltered water there so that's north all this land here gives us protection from the northerly winds and again all this land here gives us shelter from the west of the winds. getting some right really mixed fishery i guess you got good mixed fishing yeah a lot of time right through right through most of the year we get the cod we get the skate we get all sorts of other fish, the smooth hounds, the bass, all around this area in the whole of the Thames estuary. Fingers crossed for Fingers today. Fingers crossed. So we're down here somewhere, what sort of depth of water are we fishing in? Is it's it... about 20 foot deep. Yeah, and is so that... Sometimes they're shallower, sometimes they're a bit deeper. Yeah. Yeah, and general is... sort of area. And the target species? The smooth hounds, hopefully. Hound. That's and they're the plan. In, they're in here after the, the food, the they're crabs. They're after the and... food, that's it, yeah. So we're going to be using the old hermit crabs today. I use some ragworm as well, but mainly, mainly hermit crabs for the smooth hounds. Well, that, that'll be good because I've no, never actually used hermit crab before. We use a lot of, you know, peeler and stuff yep. fishing from the beach, but mm -hmm. we'll, um, we'll show you a little bit about that perhaps in a minute. Phil shows yeah, how to bait sure. up and, you yeah. know, the rigs we're using and stuff. But a little bit about yourself, Phil, for the, yep. you know, the guys out there. He might be interested yeah. in booking a trip. But you're sort of fishing's in your blood. I think yes. I read online you've been, yeah. doing, been it doing it a long years time years and... now. Yeah, third, 30 years I've had licence now. I started yeah. when I was or 14 or 15 and you know helping out on the boats you know pulling the anchor up making the tea and that and then got my license at 18. You've done your work experience, so you've, done, you've done, done your bit. I've done then, my apprenticeship yeah yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what is your is it the the boat the Chinook? Uh, Chinook 2 Chinook which is two. um offshore she's an offshore 105 yeah twin engine so you've got nice nice and safe there with two That's engines. One thing is plenty of plenty of Lots space of as well space. nice flat deck yeah. you know you get plenty of rods so yeah nice cabin here I think we've got, we've got the kettle on behind. The kettle's on yeah yeah you got Obviously, all the facilities, toilet, and yeah, 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 nice big comfortable boat. We've got the heater on here, you know, in the winter for the time. Winter, that's it, so everyone can plenty of room in here. Everyone can get out the weather when they need one to, and plenty of room out on the deck there for the guys yeah. as well. well. All right, what we'll do now is we're pretty eager to get fishing, so yep. thanks for that. What we'll do is we'll get we'll get out there, we'll um get some bait to pred, have a little look at the rigs, get the rods out, and then so we can catch something. Yeah, fingers crossed. Excellent, all right. Right, Phil's just uh, just starting to get the rod sorted. We're just anchored up now on the fishing ground, so I thought it was a good time just to talk you through a little bit about the tackle and stuff we're using today. 
predominantly I'm a beach angler, so when I spoke to Phil originally, I asked him if it was okay if we can, you know, use a bit of gear on board, and he said there's absolutely no problem. It's all supplied, which is, you know, obviously really handy if you fancy a session out and you, you know, you haven't got your own gear, you haven't got to worry. Now, onto it. It's a standard boat rod. I think it's 18 to 25 pound class. We've got a fixed bull reel on here. I think this is one of the old pen spin master reels which are built like tanks, they're superb. And I think the reason for using the fixed spool is because obviously on board you get all different types of angler. You get your novice angler, you get your expert, you get your junior, your beginner. And a fixed spool just makes it easier. There's no worries about birds' nests or you know anything like that. The drag is set and they're all ready to go. It's loaded up with some 14 kilo mono. And then it comes down to ever so simple running ledger rig. And we've got a a zip slider on there, as you'll see that slides up and down along the length of your mono. We've got eight ounces of lead. We're sort of, I think we're just at uh, the start of the flood now, so there's not a great deal of tide running, but as it picks up throughout the day, you want that ounce, eight ounce lead to keep your bait secured on the bottom. A couple of buffer beads there, just to protect that knot, your swivel, and then a little clip link onto your trace mono and I think the snood is 40 pound brake strain. Obviously as we mentioned before, smooth hand have got very abrasive skin. They're real rough and if they roll on the line you don't want to be messing around with you know weak hook lengths and stuff like that. And that comes down to the business end which is a strong barb size 4-0 hook. Now today we're using as we mentioned a little while back we're using hermit crab now I've never actually used these before, but just talking to Phil, you'll see them there. It's what the smooth hound come in. They love they love any sort of crab really. They come in, smash up the crab, have a feed and frenzy. And these these are the in bait to catch these Thames smoothies. Now obviously like that they're in the shell. You just take them out of the shell and you end up with the little sort of soft tail and then the the crunchy bit of crab with the legs and the claws which they they love getting stuck into now it's ever so simple how you hook them where you have the the soft sort of fleshy bit and you thread it on i mean you can almost treat them like a lugworm really and as soon as you get sort of in between the eyes and that hard shell you just bring the hook round and you can just pop it up over the eye of the hook if need be and then probably depending on the size of them We'll pop another one on too. And there, you've got a perfect smooth hound bait. Plenty of hook points showing. Obviously very important. They hit the bait. You don't want to be masking your hook points or anything like that. But that is a perfect bait ready to go. Now what we're going to do is, because it's not too bad today, because there's not many of us on board, well in fact it's only me, Steve and Phil, so we've got plenty of room, but before you cast out, because we're using about a three or four foot hook length, you obviously don't want the bait dangling, you don't want to hook it in, you know, the back of someone's head or give them a brand new ear piercing, so all we do is you just hook it on the wire of your grip bed like so, and then obviously that keeps it out of harm's way, and when you cast out, it just simply comes off there and then you're fishing. But I feel a bit bad watching Phil bait up and get all the rods, so I think it's about time I give him a hand. So what we'll do is we'll get this cast out and uh, hopefully it won't be long and we'll see you, uh, see you with a fish or two. So we'll get it out there. Hit, the, hit into the first fish of the session, proper good knock, and he's giving me some grief, he's really hanging on. I'm guessing by the way, the way it's pulling, it's probably yeah, a, yeah, it's a smoothie. Yeah. smoothie. Yeah. Uh, one on this side. <laughs> and he's just got a double hook up. Phil's got one on in the corner there. And to be fair, we haven't actually been fishing that long. We just got the rods out, and I guess it's that scent trail where. 
<laughs> this is really one. Good. Yeah. I'll just move down back the boat a little bit. I guess the that, that scent trail has really started to work. Yeah. And they've, they've come up tied and yeah, that's it, mate. Yeah, there's, there's a bit more. Um, there's a bit more tide running. They're, they're just getting their heads down now. Mine's nearly ready, I think. But it's right, okay, really hanging on. Well, you just that's a nice fish. Little, a nice fish. That's a lovely fish. Look at that. Well, I don't know, but what an absolute beauty that is. Just a shade over 12 pound, a bit of commotion and Phil's in here <laughs> with his. And I don't know, Phil, I think that's going to be slightly she's bigger, Phil, that one. That one. So that's a beauty as well. So she's 13 or 14, this one. But uh, sorry if the old camera works a bit shaky, but it's, it just absolutely went off. Two rods at yeah. once. And... Uh, I can sort of get used to this uh, Thames Estuary <laughs> fishing, mate. What the a, size what of these absolute... fins look. That's what they get the power fish, from. Fantastically powerful both, fish. Um, both starries, you obviously tell Beautiful that by the, the the starry sort of markings on the flank. Yep. A couple of absolute beauties. Beautiful, well done, mate. Right, we'll just uh, send her on away, put up an absolute tremendous scrap. Just drop her over. She's gone. <laughs> She certainly weren't hanging around, but I think we'll uh, get another crab bait ready and see if we uh, can't get some more of the other rods just gone. <laughs> Literally, it just slipped that one back. And just in the background, just behind where Steve was filming, another one has absolutely roar off. No. I've caught these fish from the beaches, Phil, but never felt power like this. It's really this unbelievable, is isn't it? Unbelievable. Yeah. I think this one might be a little a touch smaller, perhaps. She's coming in a little bit easier, but let's see if we can give you a look at him. It's a good work, <laughs> It's a good work, Hope. Beats coming down the gym. <laughs> It's not ready yet. <laughs> Speed, that's unbelievable. Oh, well, Phil's just got the hook out. Give you a, a quick look before we let her go. Another cracking fish, and uh, I can't believe the. The average stamp. There's three fish, and they've all they've all been pushing double figures. You'll see, just see that thickness across the back there. They are 100% pure muscle. They've got the big pectoral fins that give them, you know, that balance and speed and power in the water, and obviously the sort of shark-like dorsal fin. But another absolute beauty. But I'm going to get it back, and uh, I am actually going to get another bait ready this time. We'll uh, we'll let it go. I guess that's one way releasing them. <laughs> I'm knackered already. <laughs> right, we'll get another bait ready. Had a little inquiry, just wind down to it. I think that was the that was the uptide run, I think. Well, so perhaps to take a little while just just to catch up with that that big bow you have in the line, you have to wind down to it, but another fish on he's given a real jagged fight. really really hanging in this tide there's I guess there's a reasonable tide run now and he is really hanging. so 
a little little bit of weed, of weed on the line, but this feels a real, real heavy fish. I tell you, he's not he's not doing a huge amount, but real heavy. And, I, and they stay down. Yeah, it's different. You can tell he's not so not so lively as the smaller ones, you know. And I there he goes. And I tell you, it's a good job. I had my wheat picks this morning. <laughs> We're getting to just see the lead now. Well done. Well, another correcting well, fish will get you in shot well as well. Yeah, well done. You brought, brought us out here and uh, putting us on some fish. Another have a beautiful starry day. That's it, mate. Absolute cracker. But probably again, what pushing ten pound? Yeah, guess, yeah, yeah. She's not far off ten there, mate. Yep. Excellent. Beautiful fish. You see the the width across the back there. That's where all all the weight is in this this yep. head end here. You know, the tail it virtually tails weight to nothing, but they've got some power. Hundred percent pure muscle. Not an ounce of fat on it. Right. Slip her back. I'll just slip her over the back here. I think, like all the others, it's going to intake. Another one safely returned. So, we just take a, a little minute out of the rather hectic fishing here and just have a quick chat with Phil, really. And you know, we're obviously on some decent ground today for these fish, and I mean. You know, done a great job to. I yep. Well, I say a great, brilliant job. You know, obviously it's not luck. You don't just drop on them. It's years of experience, I yeah. guess. And yeah. You know, what these? Why are these fish here? You know, this time of year is it a, a special time of year? Is it a special type of ground we're on? Yeah, they it? come up here to 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 spawn and to to look for food. They're they're up here for about four or five weeks of the year. Just a very short window. We get a chance to catch these these beautiful hard fighting fish. The, the real sort of big ones. Yeah, like, exactly, yeah. the real big females there. And um, and they all go back alive and it's just great fun. You know, the anglers really love catching them and it's just really good sport for the yeah. guys. So, I mean, the, you know, obviously you're seen on camera today, we have been been blessed with, you know, the average size, you know, if you probably average them out, everything that we've had has been about 10 pound, yeah. I guess, yeah. you know, and they're, you know, spectacular fish. You know, I might fish all, all year or, you know, to get one, probably not even that size yeah. off the beach you know you come out on a day like today and you know it's been fantastic but so we, we've we've been lucky we picked the real good good bit of you know tide today yeah. and conditions mm -hmm. and, and time of year so the, the, the big fish they come in and they disappear they move further yes they go they, they, they go further south again come the end of August yeah and that, that that's our chance for them then that goes for the year and then they'll we'll start catching them again Mid mid July through to sort of end of end of August. That's our that's, that's our window sort of the bigger time, fish. The, the big we'll still fish. get the smooth ounce, the, the smaller ones, the smaller males, the smaller females. We'll catch them right through the summer. Yeah. We start catching them from about really um, end of April, early May, and then we'll get them right through to sort of mid October time, and then they, then they'll move down south again. Yeah, because me and um me and Steve were just talking off cat. I think we've both broke our PBs today. <laughs> but I think we've both broke about three or four times. So if, you, so if people want to come out here and you want to catch a big smooth and this is the time. It's the time of year. Last two weeks of July through to the end of August. Exactly, yep. And that's your peak time. But obviously you get out as we said earlier on in the cab now, you can get out all year and you know yeah, there we, seems we to be right a, a real year, yeah. rich rich fishery here. Yeah, we know? have a very sheltered estuary up here and, and the, the fish different fish different times of the year at the moment we're sort of peak of the summer and we've got smooth hounds there's, there's bass there's skate tote mackerel different times and then the, as the fishery changes as we come into the autumn then those summer fish will move off they'll move and off then we'll and start then to get... get the cod come back in yeah. shore coming down the north sea and the skate as well and then yeah. that, and then that'll be different areas we'll fish them but all all quite close everything's all within a quite a easy steam for the charter yeah. boats yeah and it's nice and i guess you know obviously a boat the perfect fishing vessel there's plenty of room but you know i guess you have your spots you go to and you've got all i see you've got you know looks like the, the uh, starship enterprise <laughs> in there you know all the gadgets and stuff and that's um you know that's obviously key to you know not only your experience but having the, the tools and the correct you know the correct vessel for the job and yeah you know you can 
you try and get on a few fish. Yeah, a lot of it is known because I've got the experience. I've been doing it for such a long time now that um, it's it's different fish. Some places work different tides. Yeah. Knowing the right depths to fish in, you know, knowing what your anglers want. That's all all part of the job, and and that only comes with the experience of yeah, doing it for that's sort of thirty it. odd years. So I guess it, you know, if, if people want to come out for a day and they have something in mind they want to catch, you can you can give an idea of the sort of time of year, state of the tide, the exactly. dates, the weather. You know, um, you know, we've got some cracking bait with us today, and you know. You can't, you can't put a price on that really, no. you know, ex no. years of experience and... You and know. the anglers will get looked after as well, I always look after them and I'll help them out, I'll sort the tangles out, yeah. so I won't just sit in the cabin and reading the book, I'll be out there, <laughs> yeah. I'll be sorting them out, sorting their problems out and, yeah. and they'll get plenty of tea and coffee. Yeah, that's one thing, eh? if you come out of Phil makes a cracking cup of coffee, so uh, yeah, thoroughly recommended, but I mean, what's it's about midday now I guess, something like that, and Yes, yep. is the... Um, what are we a few hours into the into the we're, flood? At yeah, the we're about mid flood, so we're just on the prime time. It's been quite steady. We've had some lovely fish right through. Not many quiet spells. Just as you know, every 10 to 15 minutes, we've had another fish, yeah. and we've had another yeah. fish, and real good hectic spells. And I, I guess they they're foraging about, and you get a couple of fish free. Yeah, all the time we feed. Packs. That's it, exactly. Yeah, all the time we've got some tide running. That that gets everything stirred up on the seabed. All the crabs and everything's looking for food, and that gets the smoothies on the feed. Then, so all the time there's some tide running, then we'll catch them. We'll catch fish. Well, uh, yeah. So hopefully we will um, we'll be bent into another one in a moment. But you know, obviously I know I said it, but thanks for bringing us out here. We've had an absolutely cracking day so far, and you know there's still a bit more to come. So uh, let's sit back and enjoy the enjoy race the and wait for the uh, next rod to rip off. Well, on this boat, if you snooze, you lose. Chris was just baiting up another rod, and there I was to pounce from behind the camera as this rod just ripped off. It was up tide, and it's just going ballistic coming back down tide. So far, this is definitely the, the biggest run one has taken me on. I'm hoping it's gonna be a, another good fish, but they all have been, so I'm pretty sure it will be. This is just unbelievable fishing. If you've never done anything like this, I cannot recommend it highly enough. This is my first time doing it, and I'll certainly be back. <laughs> it's given us a right run around here, and it's just hectic. There's just rods going off all over the place, and they're not small fish. The average size has been just unbelievable. Really good fighting fish as well. Snow getting nearly to the boat. Let's Phil just grab that net. <laughs> just as I say, it's coming closer. Unbelievable power. Feels like a nice fish, I this one. That run at the start, yeah. it could, it's got to be something pretty substantial. Come on, she's coming now. It's a nice fish. Try and get them in that net where we can. We're ready. Here we go. Good work. Okay. Thanks, Phil. Well done. Look at that. There we are. Fish. How big do you reckon? She's a double. Yep. She's a double. Yep. She's Unbelievable. She's I generally am lost for words. It has just been hectic. Once you find them, you certainly get some sport out of them. What a cracking fish. Let's slip it back. See if we can have another one. <laughs> oh, 
Well, what can you say? I suppose I get it back, back behind the camera. Quality fun. Well, this rod absolutely slammed over. We're pretty much come to the end of the uh, the flood tide now, and the fish has slowed up a little bit, which is to be expected, really. I mean, pretty much anywhere you fish, you have a better period of the tide than others. And as soon as that tide eases, there's less less movement and stuff in the water, and the fish can ease up. But I've got one on the end here, anyway. I'm guessing we'll just had a fresh off of weed. That's got that's got the feet. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, we just thought uh, kick start it. We'll try and kick start it. So a fresh round of baits went on all the rods and. Yeah, it didn't take long, did it? You know, it's, it's amazing. As soon as you have a little just start and scent and that in the water. Yep. It's all down to the scent. Always got to keep that, keep that scent. Keep that scent trail going. It's nearly ready for the net. Just a word of advice, if you're not sure if it's a smooth hound or a taupe, never ever put your thumb in the mouth <laughs> like this, unless you're absolutely sure it's a smoothie. So you'll end up with a bit off. Okay mate, look at her. Yeah, lovely job. Yeah, it's a case of don't try this at home. No. <laughs> the power is un <laughs> unreal. Just get the grip to him. Oh, calm down. Another absolutely perfect but another cracker anyway probably again seven eight nine pounds something like that but as I said that tide is, is eased up now so I think we're probably gonna think about heading home so we'll uh, we'll slip this one back back to this watery home and uh, think about heading back ourselves but a fantastic day today and we've enjoyed some absolutely unbelievable action from start to finish and it's been in some glorious conditions as well. Absolutely superb. We'll pop her back. She's gone. Lovely. Just as the camera stopped rolling and just as we thought our day couldn't get any better, we were wrong, as another Thames Estuary Smoothhound was landed. But this fish was different. Not only was it the fish of the day, but a fish of a lifetime. Yeah. Well, we literally just done done that sort of ending. <laughs> One of the other rods is, has roared off, and we've actually gone and landed the biggest fish of the day. And it was a few ounces over 20 pounds. Yeah, 20 pounds. And it is an absolute That's monster. monster. <laughs> it is an absolute <laughs> monster. monster. With a beautiful fish, the size of it, cracking the, the thickness across that I can barely get my hands yeah. alone. It is an absolute, <laughs> in the words of John Wilson, clonker. That's a clonker. <laughs> but we've got some, some nice stills of it. Yep. And uh, obviously, me and Steve have yeah. got to say a massive Chuck. thanks to, to Phil behind the camera, the boat the Chinook to produced the goods all day and topped it off for this absolute beast. Right, well, we're, we're back in now and um, all moored up. And what a, well, unbelievable day's fishing. You know, last night and this morning, me and Steve were up early. We left actually Norwich at four o'clock this morning, a couple of hours drive down here. You know, on the way, we're chatting, you know, yeah. six, could, could we get a few six, seven, eight pound yeah. fish? It'd be great, you know. <laughs> or what about if we got a double? You know, what about if you got a fish of 12 or 14 pound? But we never yeah. ever. You know, dreamed that we we're going to see a 20 pound fish on camera, you know, let alone 
you know it's yeah. just been phenomenal so i'd like to thank, thank you, you very much thank Phil. you very much pleasure and Quite. um yeah we hope you've all enjoyed watching it what we'll do is is we'll we'll pop a link up on the screen now phil's details on here all about the boat and his website so if you fancy day out here after the smooth hound then we thoroughly recommend it and we thoroughly recommend giving this man a call so once again thanks for watching be lucky and we'll see you again on the next one